Hi Med Fanatics, today we are doing 30 questions with a pediatrician. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Let's go. Hi Doc, how are you doing today? I am very well, thank you. How are you? I am good, thank you. So what is your name? My name is Yolanda Nkanuga. And what is your specialty? I am a specialist pediatrician. And where are you originally from? I'm actually from a local township, Gualanga, here in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. Always been born and bred. Oh, nice. And how long have you been practicing as a pediatrician? I recently qualified, so I've been practicing for two years. Oh, qualified okay. Qualified two years ago. Um, however, I graduated a number of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> in 2012, yeah. <laughs> okay, which university did you get your MPCHP degree? I'm a proud Marty, so I um, graduated from the University of Stellenbosch. All right, and how long did it take you to become a pediatrician after finishing med school? Too long. <laughs> <laughs> Can you so, <laughs> I did my two years of internship mm -hmm. and uh, the year of community service deep in the rural Eastern Cape. And then I did about two and a half years of medical officer time in PEDS. And I started my PEDS um, reg time in nine, 2019, 2019. Oh, was yeah. it immediately after that? Yeah, yeah. I came down as a medical officer and yeah. Then okay, I my okay. Time. And what did you enjoy the most about med school? Med school was full of drama, <laughs> but most definitely it was um, my friendships, my sisters, you know, uh, we created a big community, not only girls, but boys to shame. <laughs> we've mm. got some nice friends that we've created. And if anything, we dragged each other through, as you can imagine, with the climate that at that time Stellenbosch was. Yeah. And what is that cause you hated the most in med school? The cause? data management or something weird like that. It was just a six week course that had nothing to do with anything. It was just a waste of our time. Was it that in first year? It was, I think it was towards the end of the degree. So mid fifth year into sixth year, yeah. Oh, okay. And how many qualifications do you have and what are they? So essentially I've just got the two, two, three, they count as three, I don't know why. But it's my medical degree mm -hmm. and um, my master's in medicine, which is the MMED that you need to do to qualify and practice. All right, that's great. Which specialty did you think you were going to go into beginning of med school? I thought I would become an obstetrician. And why the specialty? Because I absolutely loved my prof at the time, um, Prof Geert powerful woman, Cruella de Vil, psychotic, but an excellent academic, as you can imagine. However, pediatrics has always been in my heart since I was about eight years old. I've always wanted to become a pediatrician. Med school sort of confused it a little bit, but we're back on track. Okay. <laughs> and what do you like the most about pediatrician? What made you choose peds? Babies don't lie. <laughs> yeah, they're really <laughs> Babies cute. Babies don't lie. So um, I've always had a passion for child health, I think from a very, very young age, um, understanding the discrepancies in the time that I was growing up and what was available to some kids and not available to others. And most importantly, my mom was a pediatric nurse and there were nights that she'd come home crying because she'd lost a baby. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I wanted to do is to get into her job and help her that my mom wouldn't come home crying anymore. Oh, that's so sweet. So what do you think increased your chances of getting the pediatric post? Increased my chances. I was, I am a person who's incredibly passionate about what I do. I am very skilled. I am very proud to say that. I may not be the best researched academic, but because I know what I'm doing and I'm confident in my skill. Um, that's something that makes me manage patients so much easier. And everything else I've learned along the way and I'm able to teach as well. So it really hones in. It does help um, coming into a space that isn't as black female dense, you know. However, I, don't, I wouldn't like to believe that equity got me to where I wanted to be. Mm. It was sheer passion and talent that got me where I am. 
Okay, and what are the main challenges that you have faced during your training? During the training, um, you see, I, I qualified at, at Tigerberg, so that was difficult. It was mainly Afrikaans driven. It was, <laughs> it was dramatic and it was interesting. Um, managed to get through there, did my internship in the Eastern Cape, not so much support as it is in Cape Town. However, it grew a very nice thick skin. Coming in back to Cape Town and having to prove my worth and my salt all over again because I wasn't viewed as someone who met the status quo mm. was what made my training so much more difficult. I had to explain to people who lower than me um, what I did, what I was worth, how I could do it. It took a lot of proving and it's very unfortunate that even in this day and age we have to work three times as hard to mm. go halfway as far and it's still a struggle we continue to suffer through. What helped you get through those challenges? I love children. I mm. love peds. I love my job. Um, if anything, <laughs> it's love for this job that's gotten me through because it has been a, a difficult journey and it continues to be, but wow, those kids, man, <laughs> they're the yeah. best. <laughs> and what do you love the most about peds? As I said earlier, babies don't lie. You know, mm. it's so much easier to work and, and see that immediate gratification, not only from the parent, but from the child. When you've had a child who's come in and was acutely ill and was not smiling or not playing, and then the following day, the mother's complaining that the child won't sit still and is climbing things, and that personality's back. Mm -hmm. So it's brilliant. I love it, love it, love it. And what do you hate the most about peds? Grown-ups. <laughs> Grown-ups break babies. <laughs> And um, how many hours do you work in a week on average? In a week, maybe about 60 hours. Hmm. About 60 hours a week, the five day week normally. And then there's extra calls or shifts that one does over weekends. So yeah. Okay. And what is your day to day routine? I work in an office currently. I'm a researcher. So my day to day routine can be as exciting as my paperwork and research goes or you know, we might um, be able to recruit a baby in the nursery and we're there. So I work both in the clinical space and in the office. How flexible is your job in terms of having the work-life balance from a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most flexible? Currently, my job is at least seven to eight, but that's mainly because right now, post qualification, I'm a researcher. So when I was in the clinical space and being a mother, it hasn't been very easy, not very flexible. But now I'm able to drop my own child off at school and pick her up, which is brilliant. What do you like to do outside work? I'm a couch potato. <laughs> <laughs> I love to Netflix and chill. I think there's enough drama in the world. Um, I just love to hang out around, around my loved ones. I'm not the most athletic or sporty of people. So anything that's calm, lunches, brunches, you know, beaches, walks, mm. I'm there. Not hiking, not running, not park runs, none of that yeah. stuff. No. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of cases does a pediatrician deal with on a day-to-day -day basis? It doesn't have to be what you're currently doing right now. So because pediatrics is so broad, it goes from 600 grams infant all the way to 50 kilogram massive 12 year olds. Um, it depends in which department you're working in. So currently in the nursery, uh, we're dealing with those kind of clinical um, issues where we've got acutely ill newborns that were either born too early or born under tumultuous um, circumstances um, and we've got to resuscitate and run in the in the um, in the nursery ICU and then on other days we're working in MOPD where we are having ambulatory pediatrics and we're dealing with children with behavioral issues we're dealing with children who are presenting with rashes which is not always so exciting um, we're dealing with children who've got chronic ailments and everything in between so from the ICU to the OPD Okay, and what is the most devastating case you have ever dealt with? Oh, that's a very painful one. We had a, a six-year-old boy 
who was brought in by his grandfather because he wasn't feeling so well. Long story short, he was discovered to have a form of leukemia and he mm. was quite acutely ill, but he was brilliant. He was so intelligent. He knew he was supposed to be sick, but he didn't understand why. And after a week in the oncology unit, he was subsequently admitted to ICU because his blood work didn't look normal, not because his personality had changed. And in the middle of the night, we were called because his blood work had worsened. And when we went to go see him, he was talking and he was very irritated. He didn't really want any more needles. And then he started fighting and, you know, acting a bit confused. And we thought maybe it's a six year old who's having a tantrum. But it was actually, you know, his last fight. Mm. Um, painfully to say that morning, we didn't have a six year old anymore. So those are the most painful situations that we've had where, you, where you've got a child who's alive, you know, who's not just alive by having a pulse, but an alive child with a personality. And 24 hours later, you're sending home a corpse. That's just heartbreaking. Yeah, and how do you deal with losing a patient? It's been difficult. Um, there are many patients that never leave you uh, and you mourn them forever. Some have suffered for a long time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some will have suffered for a long time, so at least you've had a time to let go and you have, you've gone through the grief prior to the actual death of the child. But some children, like this particular one, die on you mm. without any heads up and you haven't had the chance um, to deal with it. And at that moment in time, you are the least of your concern, but rather you'd like to take care of the parent or the caregiver that has lost a child. So for me personally, it takes, home, it takes me home and, and to be grateful for what I have um, I hold my daughter tightly as often as I can because Lord knows when her day is going to be. Yeah. Um, and I'm grateful for each day. So every child that I've been able to discharge safely is, I guess, atonement for the handful that have died in my care. Hmm. And how is being a qualified pediatrician different from being a training pediatrician? It's so much nicer. <laughs> and now you're the boss. <laughs> to be honest, there isn't much difference. Um, even training as a pediatrician, you are teaching as well. And you are very much on the ground and you're very active. If anything, I've got much more sleep right now than I do my colleagues who are forced to do 24 hour calls, who are forced to be running around post call and doing extra things. Um, and unfortunately, some of them are also ex um, studying for their exit exams. So reg time is heavy on the soul. Um, it's exhausting mentally, emotionally, physically. And then when you get to the other side, you're anxious because you're so used to being on 100 and now suddenly you're sitting in an office and you've got booked appointments it's quite a, a, a mind shift however when you get into the unit during your eight to five the work is exactly the same it's just that you delegate so you're less off on the ground than um, your colleagues are but essentially the studying never stops so <laughs> yeah you just get more sleep the massive difference there's sleep That's we all. love to hear that we love to hear that <laughs> so do you prefer teaching medical students or registrars I prefer teaching medical students. Okay. It's a bit difficult to teach grown-ups, yeah. <laughs> as you put it. <laughs> grown-ups have already got indoctrinated methods and beliefs and things like that. So it, it's a bit difficult to teach them. Whereas with medical students, you know, it's a, a much higher output. Um, and you also get to empower somebody who next year is going to be in your shoes. What subspecialties exist in pediatrics? Too many. Um, well, we start with the small e, so there's neonatology, which is a speciality in newborns. Um, those newborns range from 24 weeker, that are about 500 gram size of a Coke bottle, all the way to your seven kilogram baby that was born to a diabetic mom. And those babies can complicate in every which way. 
there's pediatric cardiology, pulmonology, allergology, neurology, um, gastroenteropathies, uh, or gastroenterology, sorry, um, oncology, which is my worst subspecialty where I've lost many patients. Um, so there's a number and there's ambulatory pediatrics as well. However, we love our Gen Peds, you know, we love the people who are not in the subspecs. We love the people who are out there in the communities that can identify the infants and, and the children before they need to get um, to specialist management. And what is your favorite speciality? Neonatology. Oh, all right. I love the tiny babies. <laughs> they don't swear. <laughs> yeah. And why should someone choose pediatrics? It's, so, it's such a rewarding vocation, but it's also a calling more than a choice. Mm. Um, we are not the highest paid when it comes to doctors. <laughs> We'd rather do orthopedic surgery yeah. or even um, the aesthetic specialities, but it is incredibly rewarding. Okay, and why should someone not choose pediatrics? For that exact reason, it's, it's not meant to be a choice. Um, you get in the space, you're on the playground, and you feel this is where I belong. That's definitely where you should stay. If you are not somebody who is patient, and if you struggle to work with others, and if you're okay with burning yourself out for menial work, and tomorrow somebody blames you for something minor, then mm -hmm. you then you choose peds because you need a tough skin you really do yeah and when was the last time you felt like a failure in my workplace or in my personal life mm. <laughs> let's stick to workplace let's stick to workplace <laughs> because as a mom you're always a failure yeah, oh, shame. yeah um i am not somebody who looks at myself in that light mm. um i am extremely confident but I'm also very humble. I know that I'm flawed. I know that I'm flawed. I know that there's so many things to learn. However, I don't think it would be fair on the amount of work that I personally have done, not only on myself, but also on sharpening my skill to then, when I'm disappointed by something, believe that it's a failure. Mm. You know, I don't think anybody should ever look at themselves in that light. You wake up every day, that's conquering something. Um, and, and you just trod through. So no, I don't, I don't ever remember ever looking at myself in that light. Okay. And what has been the highlight of your career so far? The highlight of my career. I think every day is a highlight in my career. Hey, I mean, I, I love to teach. I honestly love to teach. Mm -hmm. That makes my day. So I love to teach, um, but I also love having our poorest, poorest, poorest prognosis. Exit the hospital, walking with the parent. That's, that's the best feeling in the world. That is having, you know, that's watching a champion who doesn't even know what they've done in the world and they've overcome so much. So yes, those are, are the highlights of my life. It's teaching and discharging healthy kids. <laughs> Okay, last question. What advice would you give to someone who would like to be a pediatrician? Know yourself and follow your dream. The Lord has put all of us on this earth with a specific designed purpose for each person. All our purposes are, are customized to the person that you are. So don't mold yourself into anything. Don't, don't acclimate to anything. Don't conform. Be you in your authentic self. Um, not only to become a pediatrician or to become a neurologist, but just to become a success in your own life story. You know, be the star in your own life story, but never conform. Be true to you. Thank you so much. You are so Most inspirational. <laughs> Thank you so much.